Chandra Natsalansi here for Woodworker's Journal Magazine. And if you're lucky enough to have one of these babies in your shop, there probably isn't a thing I need to tell you about just how useful and versatile a table saw can be. In my own shop, there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not using it constantly for ripping lumber to width or resawing it to thickness, cross-cutting smaller pieces to length, and even cutting large sheet goods to size. I also use it quite often to do joinery cuts, such as doing box joints for making drawers and chests, or tenons for mortise and tenon joinery. But one of the coolest things that you can do with a table saw is something called cove cutting. Now, cove cutting is basically creating a hollow along the length of a piece of stock by running the work diagonally over the top of the saw blade and cutting in a series of passes. This is basically a shaping operation that you'd normally need a shaper or a big router table for and, uh, and a very expensive cutter. Um, even better than that though, the process is more versatile. Instead of being locked into a particular cutter profile, by varying the angle of the stock relative to the blade and the height of the saw blade itself, you can cut shallower coves, wider coves, or deeper, narrower coves. Now, it's great method for creating all manner of custom moldings for picture frames, crown moldings for cabinets and furniture. By creating shallow uh, or, or deep, narrow coves, you can create your own wooden drawer pulls or uh, cabinet door pulls. Uh, it's really a terrific method that every woodworker should try at least once. Now let me take you step by step through the cove cutting process using nothing more than a standard general purpose saw blade and a couple of straight strips of wood used as fences clamped to the top of the saw table. In preparation for cove cutting, we'll go ahead and unplug the table saw and remove the stock blade guard assembly. Now this is necessary because stock is going to pass directly over the top of the blade and we're going to use push sticks to make sure that uh, we're going to be safe during cutting. And go ahead and replace the uh, zero clearance uh, throw plate insert. Normally when we cut with the table saw blade we're passing stock directly through the blade at a zero degree angle leaving a narrow kerf. But when we start angling our fence and hitting the blade slightly sideways, we reveal the profile of the round blade, which gives us our nice cove shape. Now you can figure out the exact shape of the cove you're going to create by trial and error or by using a, a chart that's available online. But I much prefer using a dedicated uh, saw cove angle calculator. Here I'm entering my blade diameter, desired cove depth and length, uh, the amount of offset in case I want to create an irregular cove, um, and then uh, when we press the uh, action button there, it generates our fence angle of 61 degrees. Here are our two fence strips, basically just two straight strips of wood. Uh, the primary fence is a little bit heavier and longer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use an old candle and rub it on the uh, the edge of the fence strips in order to make them slicker and this will allow our workpiece to slide more smoothly through the cut. Now here I have an adjustable protractor that I've set and locked at our 61 degree uh, fence angle and I'm going to set one edge of this against the uh, edge of the table saw table and now uh, before I clamp the fence down I'm going to go ahead and take another rule and First, I'm going to go ahead and uh, raise the blade to one half inch above the table. And then I also want to know where the cove is going to start relative to the edge of the stock. And in this case, I want it to be about a half inch. So I'm going to move the protractor in until it's a half inch from the inner edge of the blade. And I'm going to go ahead and mark this with a sharp pencil. Now we'll retract the blade and set the other edge of the protractor to the line we just uh, drew. And now we're ready to go ahead and clamp our fence down. I'm just going to use a couple of quick action clamps. Um, okay, 
I'm going to set the edge of the fence against our protractor and it should be in just the right position now. I'm going to go ahead and carefully clamp it at both ends. You might need to use a scrap of wood between the top of the saw table and the rip fence rail to get a more secure clamping action. Okay, now one more time I'm just going to check that uh, my fence angle is exactly the same as the protractor. Now here's my workpiece, which I've cut and milled uh, nice and straight and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and lightly press the secondary fence against it. Now this fence isn't absolutely necessary, but, uh, but it helps to keep the uh, workpiece from uh, wandering uh, away from the primary fence, which can pretty much ruin the uh, smoothness of the cove profile. So I like to use the secondary fence. You just don't want to clamp it too tightly against the workpiece, uh, which would uh, prevent it from sliding smoothly. And once this fence is clamped in place, you can test it and make sure that the workpiece slides all the way through the cut uh, with no effort. Now we're just about ready to take our cove cut. Uh, in preparation, I'm going to go ahead and raise the saw blade just a skosh between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch above the saw table for the first pass we're going to take. I'm going to turn the table saw on and put on my ear guards and uh, plug in the dust collector because this process generates lots of dust. Now we're going to use a pair of push blocks to actually feed the stock over the blade so that's going to keep our fingers and hands clear. I'm using two here to keep the stock and we're going to push it at a slow rate of speed over the top of the blade keeping it in firm contact with the saw table and moving it as smoothly as possible to, uh, to take a nice even cut. At the end of the cut, carefully remove the stock and you can check it if you like to make sure everything is working nicely for our first pass. Now we're going to go ahead and raise the blade just an, about another sixteenth or so of an inch for the uh, second pass. And in this way we're going to gradually uh, continue shaping our cove. Smooth feed is really paramount here to get the uh, cleanest possible cut from the uh, saw blade. Now here I've taken a couple more passes and uh, I believe this is the next to the last pass. So at the end here, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the saw blade, wait for it to come to a complete stop, and then with my rule, I'm going to go ahead and check that the final pass is going to be the correct depth, which is a half inch. And ideally, the final pass should be a very, very shallow one. Um, this will assure the smoothest surface for our cove, uh, which will then require the least amount of sanding to get to a, uh, a cabinet or furniture grade uh, level of finish. You can see I'm just removing probably about a 32nd of an inch of material here. And that will give us a really nice smooth cove cut. Now here's the final cove cut ready to be sanded and uh, trimmed to, uh, to final profile for our desired use.